Hi everyone, thanks for joining me and welcome to another CareCollab video. The orchid feature today is the fabulous Tanhopia acidensis, which is a primary hybrid, a cross between two species native to Central America. For this episode, I have joined up with two other channels, Hillbilly Orchids in the United States and Ninja Orchids in Southern Spain. The links to their videos are available in the description and I recommend that you visit them. To start with, a very special thanks to Nina of Ninja Orchids and that's for two reasons. For one, thanks to Nina for organizing this Kerkala video and uh, also for being the mind behind the CareCollab project, which videos, as you may know, share first-hand personal experiences with growing orchids in varied environments. Another thing is, this Thanopia acidensis of mine here was sent to me last fall by Ninja Orchids. It was a division of her own plant. Stanhopias are not easy to get, and a specimen like this is almost impossible, unless it comes from a private collection, which was the case. So thank you very much, Nina, for this wonderful show. We have here, this orchid is blooming beautifully with three spikes holding four buds each. Absolutely amazing. The buds underneath the basket were the first to open. It was three days ago, right before 7 a.m., These uh, ones just opened this morning, also at 7 a.m., around 7 a.m. There seems to exist a pattern here, which is good to know because there are four more buds to open. I missed the opening of the first ones by a few minutes, but I had no idea they were so quick to open after having stalled for so long. However, it was different with the ones that opened today as I left the camera on a time-lapse mode. Otherwise, I would have missed it again. And here they come. They open rather quickly, sort of burst, but uh, I would love to sit in real time. I'll be here in time not to miss uh, the uh, third spike uh, when the blooms open. I have no idea when this uh, will be, but uh, maybe tomorrow or the day after. If it happens before I upload um, this video, I will add the footage to the end. The buds have such a cute shabby shape, don't they? Most Stanhopias have this particular growth habit, growing new shoots downwards. This one did. There are two pseudobulbs growing under the basket, and uh, of course, they also can throw spikes from below. That is why Stanhopias must be mounted or potted in hanging baskets due to their pendulous shoots and inflorescences. This orchid has been with me almost one year now. Still, I cannot take full credit for these blooms. Look at this plant, she's so vigorous and obviously very well grown. This gorgeous, fantastic blooming is the result of being a wonderfully grown plant from the start. I guess I am also lucky that she's enjoying this uh, place where she lives. The flowers are amazing, large and waxy, sort of creature-like. They have these uh, thick structures and um, to me they look like uh, sculptured, uh, covered in alabaster. Petals and sepals are arranged in a complex way. Uh, which uh, has to do with uh, the sophisticated pollination mechanisms. This top part here looks like a bird in flight. I mean, the sepals here, often called outer petals, alternate with the real petals. These two here, which are strangely reflexed going backwards. And the lip pointing downwards is so very alien looking. These flowers cast a very powerful, spicy, sweet fragrance, especially during the warmer hours of the day, which seems to be fading as the blooms mature. These are short-lived flowers, but having several spikes opening in succession does extend the flowering period from a few days to several weeks. 
The flowers may last from three to five days, uh, maybe a little bit more, but not much more, which is no wonder. The amount of energy that plants need to produce and sustain each flower is incredibly high, especially blooms like this that are so large and um, have so much uh, flesh in them. Generating blooms, especially such heavy structured blooms as these, not to mention the production of copious amounts of nectar and the strong scent. It all requires extra energy by plants and uh, therefore can come at a high cost. Reason why they are shortly. This orchid lives under this porch all year round. Here she is uh, sheltered from the sun or the rain by the roof. And um, my epiphytic cacti that hang around her form a sort of curtain that gives some protection from cold winds during winter. She went through last winter, which was the first winter in my care, without any visible stress, although getting lower temperatures than uh, currently advisable. My winters can get as low as 4 Celsius at night and 12 Celsius during the day, although last winter was pretty mild and sunny. Here she gets bright light all day long and even some direct sun late afternoon, although filtered by the hammered glass pane over there. This orchid has been very easy for me so far. I just chuck clean water on, or water with fertilizer over the roots and that's pretty much it. If you ask me what is the medium, I will tell you that there isn't any, apart from the hob material at the bottom. And if you want to see why and how she got to, to this setup, I recommend that you watch uh, Ninja Orchid videos on the subject, uh, which uh, you will find most interesting. I will leave you the links in the description. She has pretty much bare roots in this basket, and all you can see here are roots and pseudobulbs. The roots are spiky and prickly, like uh, pine needles. And um, many of them grow upwards, which is a strategy used by stand hobbyists to collect leaves and dust, which in nature is their nutrient supply. That's a very similar strategy to Ancelia africana, by the way. Due to its setup, she's a very thirsty orchid, especially this time of the year. We are in summer where I live. I water it on a daily basis as days are long and temperatures are higher, although my summers are never very hot. I fertilize same amounts as Cattleyas and Vandas, but I know that uh, these roots are very sensitive as they are so thin. Uh, I mean sensitive to salt accumulation. And so I also flush them quite frequently with clean water. In winter I water less, a lot less all depending on the temperatures and uh, on days being sunny and bright or overcast or rainy. However, I do not let the roots dry for long. Uh, that is, not giving it a proper winter rest uh, as such. I fertilized very little during last winter and I even eliminated fertilizer during the cooler, shorter months of January and February. Hello, I am back three days later. I've been here since around 6 o'clock a.m. and now it's nearly 7 a.m. Just in case I was here yesterday, also at the same hour, waiting for the blooms to open, although I already thought they wouldn't. It was just in case, we never know. But I was almost sure it would be today. That is, the first two spikes opened three days apart, and so if this follows same pattern, today will be the day. So, camera set on time lapse, and let's enjoy this treat. I must tell you that I was so happy to, to watch them open in real time. And it was fast. It took around 20 minutes altogether. 
so amazing. The first blooms have faded in the meantime, but I still have six to enjoy. You will get more information from the other two channels that are participating in this care collab, so please check them out. Hillbilly Orchids and Ninja Orchids. Links in the description. Thank you very much for watching. And if you need any further information, please let me know. Have a great day and I hope to see you back in my next video.